Right, this is a very quick and dirty stand for the uh, Kamado Joe Jr. And it's made from a piece of plate with a hole cut in it. The original wire stand for the Joe, which I bought with the with the barbecue. And an old Singer sewing machine table. And I think I think it's pretty cool and pretty happy with it. We'll have a quick look at how we did it. We had to do some repairs on the on the cast iron table. But you can find these in junkyards for you know 50 quid if they're broken. They're very fashionable on eBay with fancy marble tops on them, but you can still find them. There were thousands of them made, so don't pay too much for it. All right, you two. What we got here is a bit of cast iron with a crack in it. And, uh, going to knock off the loose paint with a little burr. I'm not going to try and V it out and penetrate deeply into the... <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm not going to try and penetrate deeply into the crack as the actress said to the bishop. I'm just going to try and get it, close it up like that, clean the surface a little bit and get some aluminum bronze over it. We'll see what happens. find something just to clamp that I'm not worried about this little bit of stress here because this is a long run to here but what I don't want to do is start welding this side and have it twist or brazing this side and have it twist and snap off down here so I'm going to close up that gap and just overlay some aluminium bronze onto it if it'll cooperate and that'll be good enough you can watch while the clamp melts and the whole thing falls in too right before my very eyes. It may not, it doesn't all work. Um. Alright, let's see what happens. You know, I've got control of the foot pedal with my knee, so this will be interesting. Okay, I'm using aluminium bronze on AC. This I've had I saw Jody doing this on weldingtipsandtricks.com and I found it had quite a bit of success with it on cast iron. This cast iron is really old and dirty but it can still work okay. I only want to stick this thing together, it's not important, it's not critical. I'm just letting it preheat a little bit before I add any rod. You can take your time doing this. Um, the thing to do is to just barely wet the surface, get the metal hot enough to accept the filler, jam a little rod in, kind of when it forms a puddle of bronze, keep the arc a little bit backed up over the puddle and just work the puddle forward. It's kind of weird, it'll spit and pop a bit. If the cast iron gets too hot, impurities will come right out of it. Um, they kind of do anyway. We'll speed the next bit up, it's not that exciting. But this does work. Again, check out Jody's video on uh, welding cast iron with aluminium bronze. I'll try and put a link in the description. Right, I'm not too unhappy with this side. I'd like to get rid of that little pinhole there. I got a little bit hot and got some of the base metal incorporated into the aluminum bronze, I think, but uh, yeah, this side's got some porosity, but it's gonna be okay. It's the way it goes with cast sometimes. Let's see if I can get a little bit underneath. A little bit more on there. I'll probably get carried away and run over this bit, but it should be all right. Okay, so I've, I've cleaned up 
just in here a little bit. I'm gonna give it a go, just get one more little bit of bronze on there. And then, I think I'm gonna call it a day, because to be honest, raising this stuff really, really sucks. Alright, not pretty, but it kind of has a coating of aluminium bronze all around it. It is very, very dirty. It's stuck together, it's good enough for this job. Um, it's an old sewing machine stand. Somebody had put a marble top on it, but I thought the marble top was too good. So uh, I'm going to put a steel top on it and make it into a stand for my barbecue. All right, so this is how it's going to be. And actually, I'm uh, I'm liking the look of this already. I think the proportions are pretty cool. So now I need to do some measurements. Got my plasma cutter on the go. Got a circle here. Got these off here. Drop this rack into the middle. And then my fiddle commando Joe Junior should sit in there. And I think it's going to just. I think it's going to work really well. I'll give a plasma cutter and see if we can't cut a hole. All right, I'm going to take lots of measurements here just to centre this up. Square it up. Um, takes a few minutes. I'm going to take lots of dry runs of the plasma cutter and unsnag the cable and then take some more dry runs and then get going. Alright, so the the more stable I can make my hands and body here and the more smoothly I can move, the better the cut quality is going to be. I eventually settled on uh, just resting one hand on the table and dragging along slowly like that. Right, so there's one little bit that didn't quite come off there. I'm just going to cut through that if my glasses will stay on. Slice through that and hopefully a little nudge and get my feet out of the way and that's true and that's what I like. Now uh, I'm going to flip it over so the chamfer that I put on that cut goes a little bit the other way. Knock the dross off. And that is a nice clean a nice clean cut. It will take very very little clean up with the grinder just to, to make that look tidy. Next thing to do is to take the legs off this bit. Just gonna, gonna run through them quickly. So you want shink and it's off and it's on fire. I like to keep some combustible materials nearby when I'm plasma cutting. It always makes it more exciting. Seriously, don't actually. It's it's not safe, but just be careful. All right, so that's the legs off. I'm going to flip that over. And I'm going to cut three little notches, so hopefully it will drop through the hole into the table and sort of remain located. So. Uh, I think it's going to work. I'm just going to position that kind of symmetrically centered, however you call it. And I'm just going to cut three little notches around these around these feet here. I can find my 40 off goggles. Right, again, 
the more comfortable you slight TIG welding, the more comfortable you get plasma cutting, the better your cut quality will be, and the steadier you can keep your body and your hands, and the more consistent speed you can get, the better your cut will be. Anyway, I'm going to cut three notches. Uh, that one's fell through, I didn't want to do that, but it's, uh, it won't take long, I'll bring you back in a second. semi-circular I think it's going to do it's going to be good alright we're having a trial assembly in the garden and uh, as usual when you mention the B word in the UK wind and rain comes to see you but it's not too bad now this is a Komodo Joe Jr taking the innards out but even so Man handling them is not terribly good for the human body. So, uh, straight back and all that. Hopefully, it's going to fit with a little clearance around it. But it is a, it's a swine to get in. The wind keeps blowing the camera over. Alright, we're in. I don't think I've got just a little clearance around it, which is what I wanted. Can expand and contract. I don't think I'm going to do anything more to that except run around it with the flat wheel to take the, the sheared edges off and the sharp corners. Look for four bolts in the corners there with some clearance holes so it's not actually stressing the cast iron as it expands and contracts. It, doesn't, it hardly needs it, you can't push it off, but it would be nice to be safe. I think actually. For an hour's work and uh, stuff you can find in junkyards. That's pretty cool, I'm happy with that. As <laughs> you can see, the barbecue's ready, so we're having a hailstorm now. But yeah, when we can finally entertain six people at the end of March, hopefully it'll be better. <laughs> 